And now, stay tuned for a program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Custom-Made Murder. David Price gripped the wheel of his speeding automobile firmly and the grim set of his jaw matched the tightly building pressure within. He was oblivious to the heavy rain splattering against the windshield, oblivious to the danger of the storm-swept highway. He was too preoccupied with the anger welling around inside him, anger at his wife's older sister, Harriet, just arrived for one of her frequent uh, visits, and her brilliant success in the style world. David could accept Harriet's money. In fact, he often did in generous amounts. But he couldn't accept her, even for a short time. Harriet had always wanted David's wife, Margaret, to exploit her skill as a designer, or so she said. Actually, David felt she'd always wanted Margaret to divorce him. For marrying David was the one thing Margaret had ever done without Harriet's supervision and approval. Now David swung the car off the highway into the driveway, under the carport. A moment later, he was letting himself into the house. Oh, darling, you must have driven very fast. Where is she, Margaret? Where's your sister? Dear, aren't you even going to kiss me? <laughs> Fine greeting. Oh, on the phone, huh? Harriet? Oh, yes, it was an important call. San Francisco. Oh, sure, sure. Important. Everything's important with Harriet. And I suppose it's still important that you go to work for her, too, huh? Well, I'd l- at least be earning some of the money she gives me. Well, you always have to bring that up. You bring it up whenever you need anything. You can certainly afford to be nice to her, especially since she's only here for such a short time. As short a time as I'd like. Oh, come on, David, forget it. She'll only be here a few days. Sit down, I'll pour you a drink. Uh, All fixed, huh? And martinis, Harriet's favorite. I'll have bourbon, just to be abstinent. You are in a stew. Margaret, I know she's your sister. You couldn't help that, but what you can help is... Well, hello, David. Oh. So get up. I didn't intend to, Harriet. How sweet. You drink, dear. No, let me give it to him, darling. No, it's all right. David. Thanks. My, the Lord and Master. And now do you run, little sister, and fetch his pipe and slippers? And if she does? Well, she always was a little backward. Now you too. Don't worry, dear. David and I understand one another. That's what bothers him. I don't understand you, Harriet, or anyone who tries to break up a home. Is that what I'm doing? Well, it's what you'd like to do. Only I'm not the type to stand by and watch. No, no, no. I'm aware of your type, David. The big driving male, the burly one, bull in a china shop. Get it out, Harriet. I can take so much. And then the big masculine one starts breaking things. Maybe. I'd like to break your neck sometimes. David! It's all right, Margaret. Like I've always said, he's plain speaking. Almost an earthy quality. You should wear more tweed, David, you know. And, Margaret, where is that pipe you were about to fetch? You love it, don't you? Grinding your heel. Am I a bug beneath it, Mary? Sort of like Kurt Kramer? Poor little Kurt Kramer. Kurt Kramer was a fool. Uh Uh-huh. But a faithful one. How long did he work for you? Sixteen years, wasn't it? And his reward? David, you know perfectly well that Kurt Kramer was a criminal. My sister did nothing more than any employer would have done. Hmm. Kramer was entrusted with company funds, David. Everything I said was true. Yes, yes. You're careful that way. It's probably true that Margaret should take up designing again. 
But it's scarcely necessary for her to leave her home and husband to do it. You don't even try to understand, do you, David? For just one instant, you know, you might consider Margaret. They're not exactly rolling in wealth, you know. No, she doesn't need my money. She has you. Let me finish. Margaret could have four, five times as much as she came to work with me. And more than that, as much as it displeases me, I just may not live forever. I'm older than you two. Hmm. Margaret should know something about the business she'll inherit. The move to San Francisco is just a beginning. Eventually she'll stop have Stop it, home. Harriet. Both of you stop it. Please, stop shouting at one another. And stop acting as if I had nothing to say about this whole thing. Margaret, I... I'm sorry, Harriet, but... Well, I do want to try to make this decision independently. Independent of both of you. No, I'll see about that. But I'm telling you, Harriet, it won't work. Because like you say, I'm the driving mail, the bull in the china shop. I won't stop smashing things until I'm certain my wife is going to remain my wife. A very no. And my way is to beat you at every turn of the game. A challenge? Take it any way you like. <laughs> It's in the clear, isn't it, David? Through all the bitterness and coldly amusing speeches you exchange, you and Harriet, your wife's sister, have squared off, and the plan of attack keeps buzzing around in your mind. That part isn't amusing, is it? No. Rather, it's a burning, bitter hatred. What to do, how, and when. And the knowledge that now, more than ever, Harriet will do her best to separate you and Margaret sharpens your fury to a fine point. You're determined to beat Harriet any way you can. The plan of definite action starts to take hold, doesn't it, David? And the following day at the office, it dominates your thoughts. Well, Mr. Price. Hmm? Yes? There's someone here to see you. Oh. Right out here, Mr. Price. Yes? My name's Willard. George Willard. I was court reporter on the Kramer case. I'm out of that line now. I see. You said at the time it'd be worth your while to know what happened to Kramer. I mean, when he got out and all. Kramer is out of prison? That's right. A couple of months ago. And he's pretty bitter about your sister-in-law, Mr. Price. Told me he could kill her for what she did to him. Sending him up and all that. He could kill Harry? Like I say, he's pretty bitter. Uh, still worth your while to know about him? Why... Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, where is he? He uh, wanted to drop out of sight, Mr. Price. I'll, uh, I'll make it worth your while, will it? Where is he? Little bird south of here. Loma Vista, I believe. Runs a shop there, tailoring. Men's clothing, mostly. Nothing like the old days. Kramer was a top designer once, wasn't he? Oh, yes. Hmm. Loma Vista. Half of his own. Yeah, funny little guy. Not too well, I understand. Uh, well, uh, thanks, Willard. Thanks very much. I, I'll uh, get my checkbook. Well, I'm glad you're a man of your word, Mr. Price. I didn't mean to bother you here at your office, but, well, you seem to want to know about Kurt Kramer. Oh, I did. I I appreciate it, Mr. Willard. Yes, maybe you want to help him, huh? This way does everybody a little good. Yes. Yes, this way will do everybody some good. As I say, I'm... Very pleased to be the first to know that Kurt Kramer is out of prison. You folks who listen to The Whistler regularly have heard me get enthusiastic about Signal Ethyl, the premium grade of Signal's famous go-farther gasoline. You've heard me say that the next best thing to a new car is any car of any age powered with Signal Ethel. But tonight, friends, I'd just like to tell you in plain everyday language why I use Signal Ethel in my car. When I touch the starter, I want my motor to spring to life quick, like turning on a light. And Signal Ethel gives me that kind of starting. When I step on the gas, I want a feel pickup that makes the back of the seat come up and push me forward. And Signal Ethel gives me that kind of pickup. When I start up a hill, I want plenty of smooth power to take me over the top without shifting. And I can always count on Signal Ethel for that. There you have it in a nutshell, friends, the reasons why I like Signal Ethel and why I'm so sure you'll be just as enthusiastic as I am 
about Signal Ethel once you try a tank pool. It's interesting, isn't it, David, how a few hours a day can change things so. Now you've a weapon against Harry, a means to frighten her, perhaps send her away. Because Kurt Kramer, a man who once vowed he'd repay her for sending him to prison, is out free. And only you know where to locate him. And there's something else, isn't there, David? Harriet's own words that Margaret will inherit her business. Harriet's dress business is worth a couple of hundred thousand dollars. You feel that you can afford to be pleasant to Harriet, perhaps toy with her for a while before dropping the bombshell. Of course, you've no way of knowing that Harriet has a bombshell of her own. Hello? Anybody here? Margaret? Ma oh. Hello, Harriet. David. Margaret upstairs? No, no, she isn't. David, that tie, do you wear such things just to torment me? Now, Harriet, you're not drawing my fire tonight. I'm in a most delightful mood. Here, I'll take it off. Better? <laughs> Much. Providing you don't decide to choke me with it. <laughs> Hardly. Not even when I tell you about Margaret? What about Margaret? She's gone, David, to San Francisco. What? It was her decision. She arrived at it just as she said she would, independent of both of us. Cut it out, Harriet. I, I can't believe it. She'd go without telling me. She, uh, she left you this note. Hmm. I'd sort of like to know what it says, too. Hmm. You probably dictated oh, David. it. David. Okay, okay. I'll go along with a gag. She says as if you didn't know. Dear David, I thought leaving this way was best. I'm a little weary of angry words. I decided that going to San Francisco was the wise thing for me to do. How permanent this move will be is something I can't predict right now. When I've reached that decision, I'll let you know. The only thing I'm certain of at the moment is that I do want to go. See whether I'm really a good designer or not, my dear. Not David, Scared I... Scared it, Harry. But you're angry at me. You, you could strangle me. I know uh, it. No, no, Harriet. I, I was surprised for you. All right, it, it was a shock. But I'm not angry. What did you say? I'm not angry. Maybe, maybe it's best this way, I... I'll take my chances with Margaret. If this is what she wants, she's entitled to it. She really cares for me she come back. Well, you, you do amaze me, David. You really do. Oh, forget it. I'm tired. I'm going to turn in. See you tomorrow, Harriet. Maybe I could take you out to dinner. I'd love it. Just the novelty of it. <laughs> Good night, Harriet. You're glad you remain calm and reasonable. You've thrown Harriet off guard, and you've made a decision. You're certain you can win Margaret back, but only if Harriet is permanently out of the way. Yes, David, it's going to take a little time, some careful planning. And it begins the next day with a quick trip to the neighboring city of Loma Vista, in a little shop operated by Kurt Kramer. Fortunately, you find him alone. Uh, yes, sir. What can I... Oh, Mr. Price. David Price. No, it can. It is, Kurt. David Price in the flesh. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm all right, Mr. Price. No complaints. No? Well, you've a right to a few, I say. Surprised to find you here. Thought you'd head straight to my dear sister-in-law when you were released. Oh, no, 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 no. I had thought of it, yes. Once, Mr. Price, I, I'd give him anything to, to kill her. But now, now, all I want to have peace of mind. To live and let live. Believe me, Mr. Price... I don't even want to see Harriet Gordon. You, uh, you don't look too well. Oh, I'm all right. I'm fine, Mr. Price. Just do me a favor. I know. Say nothing to Harriet about where you are. Uh, if you please. I, I don't want any more trouble. And your career? I'm out of prison. That's all I want right now. Uh, if you excuse me, Mr. Price, I have a suit pattern to lay out a rush job. Of course. Go ahead, Kurt. Good luck, and I'll say nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Price. You always were all right. Forget it, Kurt. You watch him walk wearily off toward the back of the shop. 
And you start away yourself. And then your eyes fasten on something. A huge, shiny pair of tailor's shears lying on a table with some bolts of cloth and a tape measure. Quickly, you reach out. Slip the big shears under your overcoat. And leave the shop. Now you know exactly what you're going to do. Don't you, David? Back home, you're surprised to find Harriet packing a suitcase. She's decided to join Margaret in San Francisco and then go on for a tour of her numerous shops. You greet her pleasantly, try to persuade her to stay on for a while. When she refuses, you drop the bombshell. You know, Harriet, I uh, saw an old friend of yours today. Oh? Mm-hmm. Kurt Kramer. What? He's out of prison. Been out for a couple of months. Kramer. Out oh. of I wonder why no one told me. Oh, you've been very quiet about it all. You talked to him? I talked to him. Did he mention... You? Mm. Oh, yes, yes, several times. His uh, ears in prison didn't make him feel any more kindly towards you. No. No, I don't suppose they would. Now, look, Harry. I'm not going to try to kid you that your safety means too much. But you are my wife's sister. She thinks you're pretty wonderful. And for her sake, I'd like to... Well, sort of watch out for you. I mean, we're Kurtz until we know what he's up to. You wouldn't dare be in it. A man who's thought of nothing else for so long? I'm so sure. Why not stay on a while, Harry? Let me help. Ridiculous. I... I'll talk to the police. <laughs> Tell them somebody told you Kurt Kramer feels bitterly towards you, that you're frightened, want a police body down? They'll laugh at you. Yes, I suppose they would. What do you suggest? Let me handle it. I'll run down to Loma Vista and have a chat with Kurt. Well, that, that's nice of you, David. But I still don't know why I shouldn't go to San Francisco. Because if Kramer were figuring on anything very desperate, he'd do it while you were on one of your trips, not here where he'd be picked up and questioned. Oh, I see what you mean. I think you're right. Perhaps I'd better stay here until you talk to him. Oh, Mr. Price, you're back. Yes, uh, yes, I'm back. I thought I'd better come down and warn you. Oh? Yes, it's, it's about Harry. She knows where you are. Oh, I didn't tell her. She knows about the shop and the house. I see. And you can expect a visit from her. For all I know, she may be on her way down here now. She's up to no good, Kurt. I'm certain she intended to run you out of business. <laughs> run me out of business? <laughs> She'd be too late. What do you mean? Oh, I'm quitting. Didn't you notice the signs on the front window? Huh? Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't know. Oh, I'm closing out, Mr. Price. Finish. Oh. That's too bad, Hey, eh? it would be very disappointed to hear about it, I'm sure. Very disappointed. <laughs> yes, to be sure. Mr. Price, would you do me a favor? What? Here, take it. It's a key to my shop. Give it to her with my compliments. Really? Kurt, you... I am mean it. Give her the key. She can have it all. I told you before, Mr. Price, I want peace of mind, and I'm going to get it. I'm leaving town tonight on the 10 o'clock train. Uh, and you, you can give Harriet a message for me. Yes? Tell her she might as well forget about me, because she'll never find me. I'm going a long way from here, and I'm never coming back. The key to Kurt's shop, safely tucked away in your pocket. You start the drive back home. It was a lucky break, wasn't it, David? Getting the key so easily. And now you know that Kurt intends to leave town on the 10 o'clock train. It fits your plan perfectly, doesn't it, David? It's early evening when you arrive at the house. Find Harriet in the living room waiting for you. Did you see Kramer, David? Yes, I saw him. We had quite a chat. Well? Now he wants to see you. Oh, does he? Well, I don't want to see him. Well, I think you should. Get it over with, I say, once and for all. I'll go with you. What does he want? I don't know. I can't quite make him out. He seemed to have changed since my first talk with him. Frankly, I'm rather curious to find out what he has in his mind, aren't you? Well, well I... Well, there's nothing to be afraid of as long as I'm with you. We could run down there tonight. It's only a half hour's drive. I really think you should, Harry. All right, I'll go. Fine. Tell you what, I have to drop by the office for a bit. Why don't you get ready while I'm gone? 
I'll be back in a little while. I'll be ready. Her curiosity is aroused, isn't it, David? As you knew it would be. And now you hurry from the house. But instead of driving to your office, you turn off at the railroad depot. Chat pointedly with Sam at the ticket window. Then buy a ticket for San Francisco on the streamliner leaving later in the evening. And there it is, David. Another key step in your plan accomplished. As you drive home, you glance at your watch, a quarter to eight. It'll all be over soon, won't it, David? Yes, Harriet will be dead. And your wife, Margaret, is sole heir to her successful chain of dress shops. You'll kill Harriet around 9.30. And Kurt Kramer's sudden departure from town a half hour later on the 10 o'clock train will look like he's running away after killing You've planned the timing perfectly, haven't you, Dave? And when it's over, you'll take a plane to San Francisco and mark it. Arrive there a few minutes before the streamline. You manage a confident smile as you reach home and enter the house. Harriet? Harriet? In here, David. Oh. Well, I said I'd be back in a little while. And... I've, uh, I've changed my mind, David. I'm not going to see Kramer. If he wants to talk to me, he can come to see me. And Harriet, I think you ought to give him uh, a chance. I said I'm not going, David. That's final. <laughs> You'll have to alter your plans now, won't you, David? But that won't be difficult. You decide to drop the subject of Kramer, and the two of you have a highball. Then you suggest going out for dinner, because in that you see a solution. Harriet's never been to Kramer's shop. You can drive her there on the pretext of taking her to an out-of-the-way restaurant you know. And to your surprise, Harriet's instantly agreeable. As you drive Harriet toward Loma Vista... You're conscious of the shears in your coat pocket. And when you park on the side street that leads to the back entrance of Kurt Kramer's shop, Harriet becomes physical. Ah, it's in his restaurant, David. In fact, I don't see anything much but deserted buildings. <laughs> well, the atmosphere's on the inside. Oh? Come on, come on, you'll like it. It's a favorite of Margaret's and mine. All right, but you'll have to prove it to me. Uh-huh. I have to go in the back entrance. One of those exclusive deals now. Drinks at any hour. To give you your own key, too. Mm-hmm. See? But it looks so dark, David. Oh, here we are. Ah, after you, Harriet. No, David, I don't want I to. I said after you. What, uh, David, what... What is this? I don't like this. Oh, Harriet. I... But I like it. I like it. Fine. <laughs> It's done, isn't it, David? You've killed Harriet and dropped Kurt Kramer's shears, your fingerprints white clean, on the floor beside her. A beam of light from the front of the shop highlights one of Kramer's signs on the wall behind Harriet's body. Quitting for good. (laughs) How apropos, Harriet. How apropos. I'm from Missouri. You've got to show me. That was my answer to Signal's motor oil experts when they first told me new Signal Premium motor oil would reduce engine wear due to lubrication 50%. And show me they did, friends, with some of the most amazing, most convincing tests I've ever witnessed. On scientific devices, they showed me how some motor oils break down and permit damaging wear inside an engine, wear that causes engines to lose pep and power causes them to eat oil and need expensive motor overhauls. Then they showed me a revolutionary new technique that measures this wear at the very second it is happening. And on this device, they showed me how new Signal Premium Motor Oil reduces this wear due to lubrication by 50%. Well, friends, after seeing this convincing proof with my own eyes, you can guess what kind of oil I'm using in my car. The same kind I hope you're using if you want your car to last. New Signal Premium, the heavy-duty type oil you get at no increase in price at Signal Service Station. It's done, isn't it, David? You've killed Harriet, and now you're leaving her in Kramer's shop, 
his scissors, the murder weapon, close to the body. Now all you have to do is drive to the airport, take a plane to San Francisco, arrive there a few minutes before the streamliner, and you'll be with your wife, Margaret, when she receives the shocking news. The murder of her sister, Harriet, at the hands of her old enemy, Kurt Kramer. You'll also be with her when she inherits her sister's flourishing business. You slip out the side entrance of Kramer's shop. As you turn to close the door, a car pulls up close by. A police car, David, and you know they've seen you. It's too late to run now. You've got to think quickly and revise your plan. Hey, you there. Oh, officer, uh, I'm glad you're here. I was about to call the police. Yeah, what's wrong? Come here, quickly. There's been a murder. Murder? Yes. Hey, Mac, come on over. Okay, let's have a look inside. It's my sister-in-law, Harriet Gordon. I left in the shop more, more than ten minutes ago with Kurt Kramer. Ten minutes ago, yes. eh? Yes. I dropped her off here, and then I went down the street with cigarettes. When I got back, the shop was dark. Kramer was gone, but I found Harriet. Where? Yeah, she's dead all right. Just a few minutes. This is horrible. Horrible. That Kramer, he must have hated her worse than I thought. Speaking of Kramer... What? Well, why, Mr. Price? Kramer! Recognize this woman, Mr. Kramer? Harry. That's Harriet Gordon. That's the woman who called us late this afternoon. Told us you'd threatened her life. But I've told you, I didn't threaten her, officer. Mr. Price has warned me about Harriet. Said she planned to run me out of business. Oh, he threatened her, all right, officer. I heard him. Miss Gordon told us Kramer hadn't made the threat to her in first. You must have told her about them. Oh, I uh, naturally do. To warn her. Yeah, I see. And you say you left Harriet Gordon here with Kurt Kramer ten minutes ago, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes. You saw them together? Well, of course. Kramer opened the door when Harriet entered the shop. I'm afraid not, Mr. Price. Looks like you've got some explaining to do. Because of your warning, your sister-in-law called us. We decided we'd better ask Mr. Kramer a few questions. So we picked him up an hour ago. And he's been with us ever since. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speed, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Betty Lou Gerson, John Stevenson, Alice Backus, Fritz Feld, Charles Seal, and Byron Kane. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember at the same time next Sunday, The Whistler will bring you another strange story, Seattle Take Three, in which an advertisement for three passengers to Seattle leads to a double murder and the solution of a robbery. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>